Uh, got it. Okay. So they'll say 10 lines up from the end of the parak. Beginning of the line is May Ale in mine. And then I've got Notal Maklo Umaiso Biodo. Actually, I will call upon you, Peter, in a moment, because I'd like to look at one of the Faria in a moment. But let's. Uh, <laughs> it will be for this page, actually, Rosh Hashanah, Chofhe on the base in due course. Let's have a look at it. So you remember the story? It's a wonderful story. If you remember, Rabbi the Machloikas argued between Rabbi Yoshua and Rabbi Gamliel. In fact, Rabbi Gamliel was the Nossi. He was the prince. He was in charge of the Bezdin. And obviously, um, the final decision rests with him. And if you remember, there was an argument between Rabbi Yeshua and Rabbi Gamliel as to whether that month should have actually been a 29-day month or 30. Rabbi Gamliel said it should have been 29, and therefore the 30th day was Rosh Chodesh. Uh, Rabbi Yeshua said no. He was not happy with that decision at all because it turned out the next day they didn't, there was no visibility of the moon. Um, but as we know before, as we've learned, of course, the Besin does have the final power um, when deciding when Rosh Chodesh is. But there was an argument between Rabbi Yeshua and Rabbi Gamliel. Um, so Rabbi Gamliel made Rosh Hashanah a day earlier than Rabbi Yeshua would have liked. And if you remember, Rabbi Gamliel caught, summoned him to come to him on the day which he thought was Yom Kippur, according to his calculation. Again, the day the Rabbi Yeshua had calculated being Yom Kippur, Rabbi Gamliel asked him to appear in front of him and come with his purse and his stick, um, presumably traveling from, from out the area as well. Um, and he said, come to me on that day. Obviously, that would be a very clear proof, a public proof that you were listening to my view. And Rabbi, Rabbi Yeshua, that's where we're up to. Not how Maklo or Moiso Biodo. Do we have that? Turning down the uh... turning down the air conditioning here. I'm sorry. <laughs> Meanwhile, can I just ask a quick question? Um, I, I, I wonder why he's asked him to bring his stick in his purse and didn't say, come and enjoy me for a suda. Um, because he would have been having a suda. Was, was there some allowance there that he didn't want him to completely break his, his own Yom Kippur? Is that possible? No, uh, I don't think so. I mean, he, he's telling him to come. What they, what they did after that is not mentioned. Um, it didn't, didn't suggest that. I mean, you know, I can hear it's a good point um, because there would have been this extra day. Could have been an extra but then, If they're in Yerushalayim and they knew when um, and they knew exactly when Rosh Hashanah was, there's always this problem about Rosh Hashanah itself. And you're quite right, Benji. Of course, on Rosh Hashanah, that means on the 30th day of the month, they wouldn't know for sure what was going to happen during that day, whether the Aedim would be accepted, would they manage to uh, make that day Rosh Chodesh? You remember quite rightly, that day they would all keep as Rosh Hashanah to start with, and it would turn out whether it's correct or maybe the next day would be Uri Yom Kippur, uh, Rosh Hashanah. However, if you're living in Yerushalayim, um, you would have only you would have only had one day once you get beyond Rosh Hashanah. You'd know what day Sukkot, what day Yom Kippur would be, um, and there wouldn't be people in Yerushalayim keeping two days Yom Kippur um, or Sukkot either. Um, so therefore, he's just calling upon him to come to him, and that I, whether he was going to ask him to have a meal with him or not, I don't know. Um, but it looks like that would have been sufficient to show. I don't think, uh, I think, you know, he, he was coming and therefore totally relying. It's just, I'm just thinking, is it, is it, it's not such a terrible thing to walk around with a stick and a purse. No, it is not. Agreed. We must Agreed. do business. Um, Agreed. But it looks like that was just like the beginning of it. You come to me, what happened after that, eating, etc. not mentioned. But it looked very much, look at this, look, look at what happened here. If you look at the story, not al Maklo Moisa Biodo came to him 
Um, it looks like they probably did eat together after the sea. Tonu Rabonon, have you got the Giri Gemara? Tonu Rabonon. I mean, I hear your point. The, it doesn't say come and, you know, and eat with me. But th this looks like this was just the beginning to show that he really was relying on him. Kivan um, Shero Oisoi. I think I would say, Norman, just one point, because he's not going to come with a picnic hamper, even if he was going to come and eat. So the mere fact is not our Makla Mosov. It's showing he's going on a journey. He's coming to... It's, yes, for the, yes. it's, it's, it's for the public to see. That, that's really what it's yeah, about. Yeah, no, no, good point. And I think the fact he's coming with the sick, he's coming from a journey, he's coming from out of town. He doesn't have to have an ice cream in his hand. You know, it's sort of, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's showing yeah, no, he's going... No, I think what Benji was mentioning, he said, is that he could have said, Rob McGill could have said to him, well, and right, come and enough, we uh, will uh, eat together. But I think the point... Not is that you know just saying we'll eat no, together no. as you say that would have been private. What he was is some a, a public sign that he's actually listening yeah. to Gabriel. And it, I think you're right. Coming with a sick showing is coming from out of town, um, which otherwise he couldn't have done. Yeah. So you know eating together wouldn't wouldn't have shown that as much. You know just going in what actually took place inside. You know unless you've got cameras there, you won't really know what happened. Uh, but you know, publicly coming in this way, showing that really is listening to what the Gamliel said. So Tona Ravon and Kivan, have you got the word Kivan? About eight lines up from the end of the Perak. Kivan Shero Oiso, when he saw him, that's interesting. He just saw him Omad Mikisai. He's interesting, they saw him. He should have said when they met or something. What's his? Kibun Shero Oisai, we'll have a look in a moment with Peter, let's help. Once he saw him, so Ragamiel saw Rabbi Yeshua, Omad Mikis Oi, he stood up from his seat. And you normally, the, you know, the rabbi wouldn't do that, you know, it would be the other way around. People were coming to the rabbi, but Unashokai Al Oishai, he embraced him, he kissed him on his head. Omar Lo, he said to him, Shalom Olecho Rebbe Vitalmidi. Nice language. He says, Shalom Olecho, my teacher and my pupil. This is Rabban Gamliel talking to Rabbi Yeshua. Fascinating. He's calling Rabban Gamliel, obviously more senior, he's the Nossi. He is calling Rabbi Yeshua my teacher and my pupil. Well, that's a bit strange, isn't it? My teacher and my pupil. Says the Gemara, Rebbe, Shelimad Toni Torah Barabim. Interesting, there, it looks like there are no other sources for this other than this statement here. You've taught me Torah Barabim. Rabbi Gamliel would have attended some of his shurim, and Rabbi Yeshua, the great sage, in other words, he's appreciating that Rabbi Yeshua may be more senior in Chochmah than he is. So therefore, you've taught me Torah Barabim. There are a lot of things I've learned from you. However, Talmidi, you are also my pupil. She'ani gozer olecho gezera. I made this decree, and I am in that senior position to make that decree. V'yato makayma katalmid. And you've actually observed what I've asked you to do as a pupil. And I think that's tremendous what you've done. We know that you're the great sage, and quite honestly, um, people really um, should listen to what you're saying, however you've appreciated that when it comes to decisions, the decision of the Nossi is final, um, and therefore you've kept to that and say praise, praise to you. Can I ask you, Peter, please, to bring up this Gemara on Safaria, and we can look at a nice shot here. I know our Spanish uh, colleagues will enjoy this. It's from the Ben Yehoyada. But no, how, what is it? How does it prove that he learned anything from him? How does it prove? Just, how, where's the proof that he learned anything from a Rabbi Yosher? You're right. There's no proof. This sound. This sound looks like I have looked. There are other sources which say that we don't seem to find anywhere else mentioned that he taught him other than this statement. So and this looks like this. Is, 
is this, yeah, it's, interesting. It's not a proof that you learnt anything more from them. Oh no, 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 it's not a proof. But the fact that he's saying you've taught me Torah publicly, uh, and it looks like this is the only source we've got um, that actually t tells us that. But uh, that's what he said. Have a look. If you can press, please, Peter. Oh, well, that's very nice. Um, where it says not al maklo uma isov. Yeah, just press around. They are right now. Go for commentary. If we can come up with ah, Bnei that's the one I want. Before you do that, if you can go to top where it says search. If you place that in search, no, higher, higher. In your there and put in there Ben Yehoyado B E N. Let's see if it comes up with B E N. Uh, we got it. Uh, not coming up with anything, is it? You try a Y now, Yehoyado. Oh, yes, to press any of those. And now press Ben Yehoyado. Oh, there we are on the side on the right hand side. It's the same man, if you went there slightly larger for us. One of the major commentaries that have got in the Babylonian Talmud is one of the Yosef Chaim, the Benish High. Hang on. Uh, I wonder if you press on the Ben Yeho Yodo, you'll get more. Just a bit further to the left. To the left. If you press on Ben Yoh up, will you get more about him? Maybe not. Oh, maybe not. No, okay. Oh, I can't have that. What about Press Yosef Chaim? Did you get anything for that? Try that. Oh, yes, here we are. A bit more. Uh, thank you very much. Yosef Chaim, also known as the Benish Chaim, was the Chacham. So for our Spanish uh, colleagues here with us, um, Yosef Chaim, people were very familiar many of the Sfardim, uh, was the Chacham of the Jewish community, a prominent authority. Halacha, master Kabbalist, it says here. There are people who still have the surname Ishchai, Ben Ishchai. I met um, Ben Ishchai, yeah. When I was in Los Angeles, I think, you know, the, the quite big Sfardi community, they were the doctors. Uh, oh, what, with that surname? Yeah, yeah, that surname. So yeah, he did go under the... Um, Yosef Chai, the Ben Ishchai, yeah. He was preliminary authority, as you can see, there are many classes, the, the, the Ben Ishchai, Kabbal, lots of Kabbalah. Uh, composed the Ben Yehoyada and Rav, yeah, lots of other. And we've got, well, the one that we're looking is the one Bernayahu. So we can go back. He wrote various Purushim. Uh, if we can just go back to what we were looking at. No, another one. Oh, there we are. Go, there's your Bernayahu, which is the same man to the right. Oh, there we go. Let's have a look at this nice, beautiful shot here. Because notice it says, when he saw him, look at what he says, the Benayahu, Kibben Shero Oiso Rabban Gamli, when he saw him, Omar Dal Raglov, he stood up, Mikiso from his seat, it sounds like the seat, perhaps almost like a throne, uh, he was the prince, when a Shokai Al Roshe embraced him, kissed him on his head, Kosha, Havalela Mema, Kibben Shero Rabban Gamli, what do you mean he came? But nearly the Siyat and the Shmaila Lamdenu teaches us, Shalohimtin Adshe Korovetsla. He didn't wait for him actually to, to arrive. Elokiban Shero Ohu Me Rochai Komad Mikisai. Wow. Just, he saw him from the distance, he stood up. So, uh, back to the point we just made here, he realizing that maybe he was more senior in Chokhmah. He's standing up to greet him. Carry on. The Odnir Ali Daik Loimar. You can uh, learn from here. Kivan Shara Oisai. He says he saw him. What do you mean he saw him? Afal Pi, even though Shelo Raha Mois Biyoda. He didn't see the stick. He didn't see the money. Lo Chosh. He wasn't concerned that Shema lo kiem gzei rosa, but Shlemus maybe didn't actually keep exactly what he was asked to do. El he relied on al anodo shel Rabbi Yeshua. Obviously, 
the I say the the modesty of Rabbi Yeshua meant Shavadai. Of course, he would have done exactly as he was asked. The fact that he's appeared here, it's not like um, you know he really hasn't come with the money or the stick. So he just has to see him in the distance and Rabbi Gamliel showing him honor as well. It's a beautiful, um, you know, you've got the two sides. Rabbi Yeshua is showing the honor to Rabbi Gamliel, but likewise, Rabbi Gamliel is showing honor to Rabbi Yeshua and just seeing him coming is really what they're waiting for. Um, so thank you, Peter. We can go back to... Uh, Right, let's have a look here. I'm showing myself a bit. Would he be, would yes. He in, would he be in the Tchum? Would he be in the same Tchum as... Uh, well, that's what I'm thinking. It may well be he came from outside the Tchum. tchum. Uh, I mean, that, that, that might have been the part about the stick as well. He was coming from the distance. Um, but in particular, let's go back to our Gemara. Uh, the last couple of lines, Ashrei Hadar. Have you got it, Ashrei Hadar? Ashrei Hadar. Happy, praiseworthy is the generation. Shagadolim nishmoim liktanim. Even the elders listen to those who are, if you like, more, more junior. But rules are rules. Discipline is discipline. And the final word goes with the Nossi, even though it looks like, as we saw from here, Rabbi Yeshua, in many instances, was actually giving shiurim to Rabbi Gamil. Nevertheless, there's discipline, yeah? Order, order, as they say. Um, he's made a rule, um, and he, people are keeping to it, even though people are, if they could eat, remember we learned last week, people could say, oh, well, he doesn't know what he's talking about, and therefore I'm not going to listen. To. As he is in that position of seniority, he will have to, Rabbi Yeshua, listening to, so listening to Rabbi Gamliel and the Gemara says, happy is the generation where that happens. The people realize once someone's been appointed to that position, um, and that applies to everybody. Even you've got, a, a, the, you know, the rabbi, um, you know, the, the honor that you're giving rabbi, we spoke about this last we say, oh, I remember when rabbis were rabbis, what we've got today is really, you know, not the real thing. It, once you've been made, um, and there is certain, not just respect, um, I do remember the instances, actually, people used to turn sometimes, uh, I remember that distinctly, there were occasions where somebody had um, turned to my father in law at Rosh to ask him a particular aloha, and he was always very keen to say, you'll have to ask your local rabbi. Um, you know, he's been appointed, he's the local rabbi, please turn to him. Uh, I do remember the, you know, occasions like that. I remember actually, he's a for Rabbi Knobelvich, uh, sadly, just recently lost Rabbi, rabbi, um, rabbi Roberts. But I remember when Rabbi Roberts was, a, I don't remember this, but I, I remember the story, um, because he was a rabbi for more than 50, well, I think 50 years, and since he's been living seven years in Manchester, so this goes back um, some way. When Rabbi Roberts was appointed a young man, and say, you know, his old congregate, people may, may have heard of Robert Knobovich, Mervyn, do you remember Robert Knobovich? Maybe Mervyn remembers him. Um, uh, when Robert Knobovich, I'd say, retired, of course, he still had a place sitting at the front. And people turned to Rabbi Konovovich for, you know, decisions on halacha. And again, he would say the same thing. I, you know, I, yes, I think I know what the answer is, but nevertheless, you've got a rabbi. You have to turn to the rabbi. The rabbi will make, um, of course, the rabbi can always turn to him if he wants to. But ultimately, you go to the rabbi and, and they will, whatever their decision is, that's the decision we'll, we'll stick with. So it's very important, that, that point here. Says the Gemara, It's almost like the what you're saying the other way, you know, it's not Yes, absolutely, what we learned last week. Absolutely. Yeah. Whatever the generation, we point about, you know, the generation, they get what they deserve. But uh, no, it's more than that. Whoever's in that position and they've been appointed, and, you know, obviously it's, you know, as long as someone's not uh, yeah. forced the, the position, you know, he's been appointed as a rabbi and the leader. You've, you've got to listen to his um, his psalm. 
Uh, and so the Gemara concludes and says, happiest generation where the elders listen to the, uh, if you like, more junior, because the junior are in that position of authority. And then Gemara says, how much more so happy is the generation where the junior people listen to the senior people? The Gemara says, what do you mean, happy? It's not like Kalva Choyme, that's, that's an obligation. If they, if the people in, in the, the, the rabbi is a senior rabbi, then obviously everybody's got to listen. That's happy is the generation, they've got to listen to him. The other way around, you, you might have thought if there was a, a senior individual, more knowledgeable even than the rabbi, you might have thought, well, maybe he won't listen. And now Gamora's telling us, no, he does. But to say happy is the generation when junior people listen to their senior, but well, obviously that's not happy. I mean, that's, that's not a kavachoyma, that's a duty. Says the Gemara, no, that's not what was meant here. That's what it means. When people see that the Gedolim, the more senior individuals, are listening to the junior people because they are in a position of authority, they're the rabbi, they're the nosi, then what it means is the youngsters will learn a kavachoma. They say, wow. If these senior people, these very wise people are listening to the, the rabbi, they may be older, more senior, but the, the rabbi's position stands, then certainly they will learn the Kalbachim, and they will learn how much more so it's relevant for them to listen to, to the words of a person in seniority. And that does bring together the achdus in the community rather than, you know, splitting and having... Uh, splintered uh, different groups. We want we want the achdos. And with that, gentlemen, I think we can say hadron aloch im einon makirin belinen, which means various things. Um, it the normal meaning is hadron from lahador to go back. We look forward to going back on this sometime um, to do a bit of revision. So we haven't forgotten you, Peric, a wonderful Peric it was too. Um, other people say, Hadronaloch Hodor, the beauty. Beauty sits, sits with you, the Peric, that we, we got to the end, and it was a beautiful Peric. Uh, whichever way you look at it, Hadronaloch in Enamakirin, Berlin, and we look forward. And with that, gentlemen, I will now take my, my drink. It's, uh, I wish you well. All right. All right. Oh, quite a small glass, Sammy. Oh, is that, oh, of course, you're two hours behind us here. Fair enough. <laughs> Salachayim, everybody. Very well done. Great to have uh, concluded the Perik. Um, as we move on to the next one. So Lachaim, everybody. Lachaim and cheers and... Uh, Oh, that's more like it, Mark. Very good. But I think you've got to take the top off. <laughs> okay. But later on. Later on, is it? Okay. Right. Excellent. That's was good. Sort of, As we um, Gabriel on. Really, really thought he was the he was the um the, the weaker of the of the two. Yeah, that's it. It's, yeah, you can see that. And yeah. I say there, there there are other I, I don't know if you find any source. I haven't yet found a source where it actually says that Rabban Gamaliel attended his shurim. But this price is good enough. Uh, so, you know, the fact that he's saying that, saying, I've heard your, your shurim in public, I've heard from you, and it sounded like really he was. Um, well, wasn't uh, he the Nossi? Wasn't Rabban Gamaliel the Nossi or the Obvestin or something like that? I mean, didn't he have sort of maintained the authority? Could still have, you know, elders. They may have, you know, referred to them. Uh, doesn't mean necessarily was the the greatest sage of the of the era, not necessarily. Um, but he was he was you know selected for that that post. Um, in particular, it's more than that. Generally, it was from the house of Hillel, wasn't it? We've spoken about this before. Remember Rabbi Gamliel? I think I've even I I, was, I think I've spoken about this. I do remember. Let's have a look. I've got a. Uh, I'm sure I once sent something to you. Just see if I've got it nearby. 
here. Uh, let's have a look. Did I would send you once looking for a, uh, oh, here we are. Yes, I've got, I, I, there was a text I sent to somebody once when I wrote this down. The descendants of Hillel, do when we're talking about the Hillel, um, so I've got all 14 actually. It starts off with Hillel the Nossi, who we all know Hillel and Shammai. And then you've got his son, it's called Rab Shimon. Then you've got Rabban Gamliel, Rabban Gamliel the elder, Rabban Gamliel Hazokain. His son is called Rab Shimon. Then you've got Rabban Gam, um, Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai, who at the time of the destruction of the Beis Hamikdash. Then you have Rabban Gamliel, and that's the Rabban Gamliel we're talking about here. And then you, his son, Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel. Then you have Rabbi Yehuda, um, remember Rabbi Yehuda Hanossi, the one that we know, Rabbi Yehuda Hanossi. His son is called Rabbi Gamliel. And then there's another Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Gamliel, Rabbi Yehuda. And then eventually you get to Hillel, the second, who arranged the calendar, the year 359. Um, so there are 14 descendants. You've got going starting from Hillel, coming to the second Hillel. Um, but in between, you've got this, and here we're talking about this Rabban Gamliel, um, same time as Rabbi Yeshua, and as we come down from there, we have Rabbi Shimon Gamliel, and then his, the grandson actually would have been Rabbi Yudah Nossi. So with that, we move on to the next parrot, gentlemen. Says the Mishnah. Actually, it's going to be dealing more to do with the actual shofar itself. Um, but there's just a little bit, and in, in some people actually ask why this continues. It's almost uh, this, this mission should be part of the previous parak, which was doing with dealing with Kiddush HaKodesh. Um, so there's just a little bit more about um, as we start this parak. Ro'uhu Bezdin Vachod Yisrael. Everyone saw the moon. It was an incredible night, it sounds like. A most beautiful, clear sky. The Bezdin, everybody would have seen the, the moon. Nech Kuru Hoedim. They're examining the witnesses to make sure that, if you like, it really, they really saw the moon. Although everybody saw this moon, this was a real, you know, a, a wonderfully clear night. We've had quite a few of those here. Um, below his speaku ah, now. What happened? Lo hispiku lo mamakudosh. For some reason, uh, normally they would be going to the, the, we said this before, remember it would be the Abbezdin, they would be the people who would be um, announcing Makudosh. For some reason, there was a delay and they didn't manage to actually announce and say Makudosh, Ad Sheikha Sheikha, until it got dark. Okay. Hare, oh, Hare ze mu'uba. So again, after 29 days, the night after that, they saw the moon. It was a wonderful moon. So people come, the Adim come to Bezdin on the 30th day, expecting it to become day one. But they didn't manage to actually announce Rosh Chodesh, and it's already dark. Says the Mishnah Harizem Uba that they will not be day one, it will still be day number 30, even though everybody saw that moon because they didn't announce it, it will not be Rishkhodesh. You with me? And the Mogmar will explain more on this topic. Says the Mishnah Ra'uhu Bezdin Bilbad. If Bezdin themselves saw the new moon. Yan Dushar. So what happened here? Imagine the Bezdin, and it's a lovely night, a lovely, well, actually lovely, yeah, early in the night, they're all outside, and they see the new moon. Now, they themselves saw the new moon. And no, what would normally happen, two witnesses would come, appear in front of the Bezdin to announce and say they saw the moon, they'd be checked. This time it wasn't an Aidin, it was the 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 Dayonin themselves see that moon. What has to happen? Says the Mishnah, Yamdu Shnayim. 
two out of those Adims should stand up. Interesting. You might have thought, what is the point? They're all there standing, the whole be the whole Bezdim, with all the Dayonim, see them at new moon. Nevertheless, the following day, they will have to, two of them will stand and say, we saw the moon. I suppose they're all together, so it's probably quite easy for it to, uh, that ruling to get through. The Yomru Makudush Makudush. And if you remember, the announcement will be, yes, it is announced. So they have to go through that. Again, the Mukamara will explain this a little bit more. Again, a further case. Ra'uhu Shloisha. Fahin Bezdin. Three people, three Dayonim. There they are. I wouldn't say minding their own business, but they're, they're standing outside. Three Dayonim. And they see the new moon. Don't forget, you've got to give testimony in front of Dayonim, but there are three, and you'll need a minimum of three Dayonim, but those three, two of them are going to add to the witnesses. What are you going to do about the Dayonim? Says the Mishnah, Yamdu Hashnayim, two of them can act, any two out of the three, permutate any two out of three, remember the old days? Any two out of three. Um, two out of the three, we'd give testimony, that third person, he can act as one of the Dayonim. You don't need more than two witnesses. You with me? So out of those three that see the moon, two of them will act as the witnesses to say that they saw the new moon. And this one of the, out of the three will act, he'll pull it together, two of his friends, other colleagues, and so there'll be three people will be sitting as the Dayonim, and two of those Dayonim that saw the new moon will then come and in front of those other three Dayonim say they saw the moon. So again, I've got it first wide line of the Mishnah. They will allow to sit, if you like, um, two other Dayonim, Eight selayochim, next to one out of the three. So you've now got two witnesses. You've got three dayonim. Maybe one of those dayonim actually saw the moon. Doesn't matter. He's now acting in the capacity as a dayan. The bifneim. They, those two, will give testimony. The yomru makudush makudush. Why? She'ein hayochid neman al yedei atzmo. One person is not sufficient. Let's have a look at the Rashi's here, please, on this Mishnah. It's an interesting point because it's normally the Abbez, the Rosh Bezdin, not the Nossi, who would have announced and said Makudash, um, which is interesting because there, there are two different positions. There's the Nossi and the Rosh Bezdin. This would be normally the Rosh Bezdin, as we've seen before. But let's have a look at Rashi, please. Ra'u Bezdin Mechol Yisrael. V'nech Kuru Ho'edim. Mafarish, the Gemara, the Gemara would explain. Inami Nech Kuru Ho'edim. There are two separate cases here. Although you've got the Vob in between, we know, of course, the, the translation of a Vob in Hebrew can be and, stroke, or. This is an occasion where it's an or. So in the Mishnah, the first Mishnah there, uh, Michael, the first Mishnah, Ra'ul Bezdin, I'm doing the Rashi. If the Bezdin see the moon, Abachol Yisrael, every, and everyone seen that moon, or Nech Kuru Eidim, in a, a totally different case, where two witnesses were examined, but if you remember, they didn't manage to conclude and say Makudash, and then it gets dark, it's too late. And Gemara will explain why I might have thought differently. Next case, says Rashi, Ra'u Bezdin Bilvad. The Bezdin seem to be the only people who saw that moon, says Rashi, She'ein Mishe Yoid Elohim. The only people giving testimony, normally Aidin will come in front of the Bezdin. This time it's the Bezdin that actually sees the new moon at night. Um, no one else. The love Arasha Koi. It's not talking about the first part of this mission, if you remember. 
um, where it was near Somoch Lechashecha. You remember the first part of the mission is dealing with um, where they're giving and they don't manage to complete the proceedings before Nacht. This has got nothing to do with that. Elo, Shehoyo, so there's plenty of time. This part of the mission is just telling us what happens if it's the Dayonim who see the new moon. What are they meant to do? Says the Rashi, Yamdu, Shnayim, Vyoidu, Bifnayim. Two of them should stand and give testimony in front of the others. <coughs> Alfal P, says Rashi. Shekulam Ra'u, even though everybody saw that moon, Ubigmora Parech, the Gemara will ask on that, Lotehe Shemir Gedodemir. What is the point of just saying in front of other people when they actually saw it? But, but don't worry too much about that. The Gemara will pick all that up. What, um, what's happening here? Why do the Dayonim have to say anything when they actually saw it? Anyway, say, let's, let's leave that for the Gemara. And they give testimony in front of the others. Two of them, two out of the Dayonim will give testimony in front of the other people, Hashnaim. And the Gemara concludes, Sha'ain Hayochid Neamon. An individual is not believed. What does that mean? Loma Makudish Bifne Atzma. He can't just announce it. What they've got to do is you might have thought if there were, remember there were three Dayonim who see the moon, two of them will just announce in front of one, we saw the moon. No, no, no. They've got to sit in front of three people. So again, the two witnesses always saying this in front of three Dayonim. And if there were three Dayonim who saw the moon, two of them can act as the Aedim. The other one can't on his own, on his toddy, can't actually act as the Dayan. He will have to get two others to accompany him and they will be the full Bezdim. But I say, Bukumar will deal with that in more detail. Well, okay. Well, well, I, 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 a question of Emuna. I don't. I don't send the lotion of admission. Um, Sheinu Nemonim. I mean, it's not a question. It's just the Bethlehem has to have a certain number of people, two or three, or whatever the cases are. So it's not a question. It's not believed if he's one, is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. The Gemara will pick that up. Yes, it's it's not an Emuna. We can see from Rashi. When you say not believed, I mean, no. You, you see, the point is this. Normally, it will be in front of the Bezdin to check them out. So he is a member of the Bezdin. And you might have thought, no, I'm, what would normally have happened? Two people would come in front of a Bezdin and the Bezdin would check out the Aiden. Well, he is, what would he do? He would only ask the same questions of himself that he would have asked other people. But you're right. It's not speak. above the law. He's not above the law. I know he's checking other people, but he has to you know, open up uh, in case other people are going to check him the same way. So you say, you say she ain't yochid must be. You know, it's not enough. You know, it's not. A, that's the rule. That he's got to have um, three or two or twenty-three, whatever the case no, is. No, but it, I agree. But I might, you might have thought he would be. Out of all people, the dying would be believed because he's checking yeah. other people. Yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah, but I, you can understand the word Nehemon. He's not believed, even though he is normally in the driving seat asking okay. the questions. Okay. So he can he might can ask the question to himself, as, assuming he's trustworthy, and we assume he is. Um, nevertheless, the ruling is. Uh, but you're quite right, I'm I mean, when you say he's not believed. It's not that we necessarily doubt him, but we've got to be certain. And nobody was above the law. And therefore, two other, two other people will have to check they out, pick, pick him out. Nobody, nobody, don't, nobody should ever think that they're, you know, they're believed automatically um, just because, you know, they've got the, the, the you know, the shtemp of the being the Dian. Um, and we won't go down there. Um, you know, it, it, nobody's above the law. And trust therefore, they've got to be—they've got to be checked out like anybody else. Yeah, trust me, I'm a dying. Okay, fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, something like that. We, yeah. As I say, we won't go down there. Um, back to our Gemara. Loma li lemisno ruhu bezim b'chol Yisrael. 
What do we need this case for? Have a look at Rashi. Why does it say Lomali Lemisne Kol Yisrael? Why does the first part of the Mishnah say, if the Bezdin sees the new moon and all Yisrael see the new moon? Well, I mean, the Bezdin, all the Bezdin, you've got enough people there. What's so special about having everyone seeing this moon? Lomali, back to the Gemara again. Lomali Lemisne Raul Bezdin Vechol Yisrael. Says the Gemara, Itzrich, it is necessary. Salchadata Chamina, you might think, I might think, everyone, it was such a clear night, you know, this was the 100%, uh, you know, talk about visibility, um, and it, a most glorious night, everybody saw that moon, and therefore, I might have thought, if if Parasama law, what's he from word Pirasum? Everything's everything's public. It's been publicized. Everybody saw that moon. The lowly Ibruha. Have a look at Rashi. If Farasama lay Milsa, this matter has been publicized so widely to be Yom Shloshli Nirila Kacha. They saw it the night after 29. So they saw it on the night going into the third. Everybody saw that. It's almost like nobody's going to believe if you say you're making this a 30-day month and everybody saw the moon the previous night. They, they, they won't believe it. It's been publicized. So in a case like that, when everybody's seen the moon, I might have thought that, no, if everybody's seen the moon, then in that case, of course, that day will be Rosh Chodesh. Says the Gemara, Kamash Malon. No, that's what he's coming to tell me, that they have to go again, like we mentioned before, just like the Dayonim have to go through the process. So we always have to go through the process. And just because there was visibility, you've got to go through the process of, um, say, being examined by the Bezdin, even though it may be so obvious, um, it doesn't matter. And if they didn't manage to complete the proceedings before, before sunset, then I'm afraid that day will have to be day 30. Okay. Komash um, Malon. Says that now the Gemara continues. For Kivan de Tonale, seeing as this Mishnah has learnt, Ra'ul Bezdin Bechol Yisrael, why does it specifically mention Necht the Aidim have been testified? Go back to look at the top line of the Mishnah. Ra'u Bezin Bachol Yisrael and Necht Gruho Aidim and the Aidim were examined. Well, what's that adding? Have a look at Rashi. Necht Raidin Lomali, Haki Rosson, Achre Shakobo. What's this point about? examining them. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's almost like it's obvious, it's going to go through. What is What are those words coming to add here? Says the Gemara Hochi Ka'oma. The Gemara says that, in fact, there are two separate cases. Ra'ul Bezin Machal Yisrael. Of course, they've got to go through the rules. They'll have to give testimony, etc. This Nechkru Eidim that's mentioned in the Mishnah is another case. What does it mean? Another case, inami nechkaru edim. Ah, so the first case was in nechkaru lo hispiku lo mamekudish ad shechashecha harazem uba. Have a look at nechkaru. We saw that lomali. Lemisnayu lachakira klal. Kiven da ashmeino. Seeing as we've learned the chira u bezdin v'chol Yisrael, afilo hochi ma'abrim le. Kol shkein. Ach nechukroidim. Now that hold on a minute. That is coming up. Uh, in this next time, I've actually read that Rashi, and it's coming up in the next line. So let's take this one thing at a time. The Gemara starts off and says, 
So in, there are two cases in the Mishnah to start with. The Bez didn't see it, everybody sees it, and we've learned what's the Chiddush, even though I might have thought in that case, you hardly need to ex do an examination because everybody's seen the moon and nobody's going to believe you now. No, that's the first case. They've still got to go through the ropes. And even though they all saw the moon that night, if they didn't announce it in time, that's not, it's not on, even though everybody saw the moon. Next case, they're examining the Adim. This is when two Adim roll up. But still, it's not talking about when everybody, in other words, it's not all one case. We thought this was all one case. Everybody sees the, the Bezdin and everyone sees the, the, the new moon. That's one case. The second case is, not when everybody saw the moon, but just when two Aedim see the moon. But the same thing is, we have to wait. If they did not announce it on the right day, in the right day then they've lost it. Just a small now point. Rashi has got a different gear set, doesn't he? Rashi a big pardon? Uh, Rashi's got a slightly different gear set because he's got Vernach Kuru Aedim. That's, that's just the um, printer of the, um, of the um, Shas. The, the Mishnah says, throw based in Holy Soil, there isn't a further I see what yes, yeah, you're quite right. So, and that would actually fit in better. Like it's like a comma, oh, based on what you said, comma, or and that's the second, um, that's the second case. I'll yes, yes, you mean it's much, if you had the nech, yeah, although you could have the comma there still in a nech, yeah, no, it's better. You're right, you're right. Yeah, it sounds like it's one. You're quite right. The top line of the of the Rashi, the Mishnah with the Bob. Yeah, good. That was a good, a good call. Very good. So the first one is an inami. The Kivan de Tona are. Have you got the next line? Seizing, seeing as the rule is, this is the point. The Mishnah now, we've got two cases. One case, when everybody saw the moon, doesn't matter, you're still going to go through the ropes. The second, right? The second case is, not when everybody saw him, but just two aid him see the moon. Again, got to make sure it's all done in the right day. Says the Gemara, the Kiva de Tona Ad Shecha Sheikha Harizem Uba. Yeah. Why mention, you've told me there are two separate cases here. You with me? There's one case where everybody sees it, and I might have thought then you, you haven't got an option. That's number one. Second case, two aid in coming. Make sure they do the job during the day. Well, that's all. Just mention one rule at the end. It's too late. There's one rule. The one rule is you've got to do the whatever you, the, the, the announcements prior tonight. Why split it into two? What's special about this second case? Have a look at now at this Rashi. You can leave out those words. The main point is. The announcement must come during the day. If it's already the end of the day, it's too late. Have a look at Rashi, please. Kiv and Ashmi and seeing as you, we, it's been made known, the Chira U Bezim Chol Yisrael. Even if everybody saw the moon, Afilochim Abrim Kosh. Yeah. If you miss the deadline and everybody saw the moon and they, they're not going to believe it now, nevertheless, if you didn't do the announcement in time, you're in trouble. Why mention the case of the Nech Karu Ho'edim? If you're just checking on two Edim, you've got to make sure that everything's done during the day. If in the first case where everybody saw the moon, and I say it's going to be difficult now to actually say that, no, no, today's not Rosh Chodesh. People will say, well, we all saw that moon. Obviously, in, a, in a, a standard case, 
where Adim appear, they're going to have to get their act together and make the announcement during the day. Why mention that case at all, says the Gemara, as we finish this part, actually concludes that. Says the Gemara, Itzrech, Salchadata Chamina, Tahavi Chakiras Adim, Kishila Sadin. Ah, maybe once you've started, that's why it says, Nech, those words, Nech Kru Adim, are crucial. The Aidim have we've started examining the Aidim. Let's take a standard normal case. Aidim roll up and they say, We saw the moon. Okay, they're going to check them individually. They've started that process. You know, it's like once you get it, you know, once you've started and you've got in before that, you know, the 5th of, uh, of April, maybe then, you know, you can carry things on from there. Have a look at the Gemara. Salk at the beginning of the line. Salk at that time when I might have thought to have a hakira seidim kishilas din. Once you've started the examination of the aidim, they got there in time. They hadn't closed the doors. You know, like the back the old days with the banking. You got in there before half past five or whatever it was. Once you're in there, they'll have to serve you, even though they've closed the doors to new customers. You're in there. I might have thought the same thing here. They're in the bezdim. They've started the examination procedure. It's like the beginning of the din, or Makudush Makudush, just this announcement at the very end. It's like the final, it's like a verdict, a gamar din, if you like. That maybe you can do at night. Midi, that very interesting. Midi the Haviadini Mominus. There's a rule, and we'll find the posseg in a moment, when there is a judgment or the, the bezin sits during the day. There's a posseg in a moment. The bezin sits during the day, but once they've started sitting, you can still have the verdict at night. They can judge during the day, but the a verdict can be at night as long as they've done Things during the day, that's fine. Hochinami, I might have thought, Mekadshim Balayla, just this announcement, Mekudush, Mekudush, that can be at night. If I've gone through the process during the day, you know, it's like, the, you know, the doors are open when I got there, and therefore we can continue on with the process. So that's what this mission is telling us. Nechkuru waiting, even though they're examined, and maybe they've actually to finish the examination during the day. I might have thought now, well, it's just an announcement. No. Komash Malon, this is what this mission is telling us. It's not the, the examination of the aiding which has to take place during the day, the announcement as well. Says the Gemara, this is the final piece, the Eima Hochinami. Maybe, it's maybe no. What makes you so certain that you've got to have the Makudush Makudush, the announcement during the day? We just said before, when it comes to normal monetary cases, monetary cases, yes, you do the, the, you, you, the, the court cases during the day, but you can have an announcement at night. Why can't you do the same thing? That's what it means, hockey dummy. Omar Kro. This possible we've seen before many times, dealing with Rosh Hashanah in particular. Ki chokli Yisrael hu mishpot leloke yakev. Particularly, it's talking about judgment when we, we had various psukim, talking about Kiddush HaChodesh, particularly on Rosh Hashanah. Kiddush HaChodesh. It's called a choik li Yisrael hu. It's a statute. A statute of the... Uh, remember we spoke with Tikkun Bachodesh Shetra at the beginning of the Posuk. It's a statute that the rules are handed down to the Bezdin to decide when Rosh Chodesh will be. It's a choik. And a mishpot leluke yakin. Now, says the Gemara, when is the statute, when is the final verdict when Rosh Chodesh will be, and indeed Rosh Hashanah will be? Amos choik at the end of the judgment, when they've announced it's Rosh Chodesh, that's the final verdict. 
the kokori le rachmona mishpat. It's considered mishpat, the judgment. It means the judgment process, not the final announcement, but it's considered part of mishpat. So this posuk's telling me that in this instance, just like the when we say the court case takes place during the day, in this case, the choik has to take place during the day. It's a, from this posuk itself we're learning. Amos have a choik big madin, Mishpot continues the Gemara. Ma Mishpot Bayoim, Avhochanami Bayoim. Just like the, uh, the Mishpot, which means the court case, takes place during the day. And Rashi tells me the Possum. Have a look at these two Rashis and then we'll stop. Kichoku, Bekidish Achidish Doroshino, we learned this in Davches. But that posseg is talking about being mekadish the chodes, sanctifying the moon. And it's called a chok. It's a statute handed over to the Bezdin here in this world. And it's a mishpot. It's called a mishpot. Now, mishpot means a court case. Mishpot bayoin, says the Rashi, nafkalon the Sanhedrin. That's learnt out in Sanhedrin. Do you remember the posseg? The posseg actually in Kiseitse, for your beyoim hanchiloi espono. When you're talking about court cases, it's meant to be during the day. That's when you're just making decisions. You're you're having a court case, deciding on. This is talking about inheritance cases. Ma beyoim hanchiloi espono beyoim atomapil nachlois. When you're talking about having a court case about uh, inheritance, a uh, nachalo. All those things should take place during the day. But the fact you've got this word choik in that same posuk, they're both, it's a choik and a mishpot. That's really what we're saying. The final verdict is the same as, in this case, the court case. Just like the court case takes place during the day, we do need to have the final verdict, the choik, when you're announcing when the rishchidosh will be also taking place during the day. And therefore, if... The witnesses were examined, but they just didn't manage to get the announcement, Rukudish, Rukudish, it's no good. You'll have to then delay it over to the following, the following day, and therefore that, that month will have to be a 30-day month. And uh, day, instead of having 30 being day one, 30 will be day 30, and the 31st day will be that Rukudish. With that, gentlemen, we got to the two dots. Uh, the Gemara will we'll follow this up with, um, but really, this paragraph say, well, this is like just the, the, the finishing touches to Kiddush HaChidush before we then move on to the Shofar itself. Uh, do we got any um, Bali Tekia here? Um, of course, you've got this week in your laning Baha Aloscha. We're into Shlach Lecha here in, in Israel. Baha Aloscha, you've got the trumpets. So you've got trumpet voluntary there as well. Not that that's not a shofar though, that is a chatzot's race. Um, and worth seeing there, the trumpets and the different, the two trumpets when you blow one, when you blow two. But some of the lessons actually, um, have a quick look at that. Um, it talks about the trua. They blew this, this different notes. The trua sound is what we have in Rosh Hashanah as well. But in this, in this instance, when you're calling together the people, um, uh, that's all done with the trumpets, one or two different trumpets, uh, as you'll see in the coming weeks, etc. That's Could I just I... say that uh, Malcolm Miller, by sheer coincidence, just has apologised for not being with us. So he would have picked oh, up the trumpets. Uh, the, the trumpeter. Oh, right. OK. I just um, apologise. OK. Well, perhaps we'll hear more about him, so I'm sure it'll be more as, as we move along here when we talk about what type of chauffeur is, is kosher. And people just think, oh, well, you know, a ram's horn. But there are rules, there are rules like there are with everything else. Um, there are rules. What makes a kosher? Um, and then it will go in actually into the trumpets. There's another Mishnah coming up where they actually had to, in the time of the Beis Hamikdash, they had trumpets as well. Um, it's actually quite a short peric. It's only just a couple of duff, and then we move on to the last peric, which deals with, again with Rosh Hashanah, um, various of the Takonas and um, rulings that they made at the time of Mesa Mikdash. Very interesting. 
how they blew and the psukim for Rosh Hashanah. Um, so that's still to come in the next prayer. But with that, gentlemen, I wish you all well. Good to see you. Good to see you, Laurie. Thank you, Norman. I, I, I it must say, it must have been really frustrating if you everyone saw the moon. Yes. And the best in failed to. It, it can't create good relations between the people and the best in. No, you know, indeed. The best in is not, indeed it's, it's like bad governments, isn't it? They're not it's really doing their job. And you'd think, therefore, knowing that, that they really would get their act together. And particularly, yeah. um, as you say, if it's everybody seeing them and there's, uh, it's true, you know, it's why they got delayed, um, it may well have never happened because they need to know, you know, if, if you know that the ruling is, if only there's going to be a lot of talk about this, dear me, yes. everybody saw them in, why couldn't you get your act together? Maybe time yeah. to, um, a bit of retirement, early retirement. Yes. No, so you're right. The mission is telling you what the rule is. And yeah. you can, you know, assume that knowing that they will do everything in their power. Yes. Everybody, so there's no reason why not. The only issue will be, you've got to get a hold normally of the Nossi. So we've just yes. got to make sure he's available. Um, yes. And okay, we would have to make him so. Now, there could be instances. Now, I'm just thinking, you know, the Nossi, don't forget, he was the one bridging the gap between them and government. And particularly, you know, outside governments, whether it's Romans or anybody else. So there could be occasions where, you know, he's been called. Um, and, and we'll see more about that, where the other people can take over uh, under certain circumstances. Um, but yeah, but yeah, they would know the rules and they would, I'm sure, do their best to make sure that they, they manage to uh, get it in in time. So I wish you well. Anybody else Thank join you. us? Yeah, we've got, as I say, Michael's well, hopefully. Yeah. Thank you. All good. Thanks.